So then we go into He Never Died. Mm. Um, and I want to applaud that. It, horror is one of the oldest styles of filmmaking. Some sure. of the very first films ever made were horror type stories. So a lot of stories been told over and over, reinvented. This was very original. Um, so how did, where did that project come along? Uh, at what point in the project did you get involved? Because um, it sounds like you were more than just a hired actor on sure. that film. Um, at the end of 2012, I was starting Five Nights at a Little Place in New York. Just gave me more excuse to live there longer and eat more pizza. So I said, put me in a small place for a week instead of a big place for a night. So the agent said, sure. So that's like being in, in New York. And so I, I'm on my way to soundcheck for the first night. And uh, my manager writes me and she said, there is a script waiting in your email box as soon as you're done with sound check just sit down and read it i just finished it you're gonna die so you know she's she under she she knows what i'm into so i sat down and read this script he never died and i just read it and i'm laughing i'm like wow i want to do this so badly and i i called her i said this is amazing she said the director and the producer are in manhattan they want to meet you tomorrow if you are so inclined they'll come to you they'll come to the starbucks across the street from the venue at 4 p.m the next day i meet uh zach producer and jason krofcheck the writer creator and director of he never died and i said you know first impressions are a big deal i said i, I hope i'm not being insulting was it cool to laugh at these different parts through this? Because this is funny. And they went, exactly. No, it's funny throughout. I go, he's, he's hilarious because he's so dead. He's like, I'm going to kill you. Oh, really? It'll give me a headache. I, mean, I just love the fact that he just like throws his violence away. He's like, ah, rip. Huh, but he's never like, he's just like, huh, everything sucks. I said, he's, Jack is clinically depressed from mm -hmm. being alive too long. They said, bingo. I said, this is great. And Jason said, I, I wrote it for you. And I said, okay, let's, let's start a relationship in truth. Who did you really want? And he went, no, for you. I said, no one writes anything for me but a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, and I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, because I, you know, I, I know your work and I've seen you. And I just, I just, I know there's this, this guy's in you. And I said, yeah. I totally identify with this guy, not necessarily eating people's guts or anything, but just the, uh, <laughs> and the humor of that. And I said, oh, I'm in. And so Zach said, okay, well, we're going, we'll attach you and throw your name into this and we'll raise money. I'm like, no, you won't. Because my, my name is not bait for seven figures. And he went, oh, you sure it is. I went, oh, keep dreaming. And so I, they started getting bites as far as getting the funding. And so the thing came alive. And so I had basically 11 months to prepare. And I worked on the script and I found Jason to be someone you, you're writing me rights right back. And I said, look, do you mind, can, can we just micromanage Jack? And like, let's just grow him together. And he went, are you kidding? Like, you, you want me to fly to LA? I'll, I'll move in with you, like, like whatever you want. He's like, he's intense like I am. I said, okay, so I, I'm gonna hit you with a ton of questions all the time. And he went, yeah. And so he and I just got into it. I go, why would Jack do this? Well, would he, would he would he do it this way or do it that way? And we, we really got into every pore of the guy, which I love. If I had that kind of time with every part, man, I, that's mm. all I would do. And so we developed Jack and you know, my script, which I gave him as a gift, it's just covered in notes. It's like, it's intense. So when we finally got together, we end, Jack, uh, sorry, uh, Jason and I end up in some tiny production office in Toronto, in a room so small, we're sitting across from each other, like knees touching, foreheads touching, going over the script, and like rehearsing parts, rehearsing Jack's physicality. And then we got into it with the stunt people. I said, okay, I think Jack is just like, you know, this, it's all utilitarian because he's had centuries of practice. There's no, it's just like, you know, rip, gouge, poke, kill, because he's just less, he's depressed. He hates everything. 
even killing. Nothing brings him joy. So he just he dispatches people. Like he learned this 700 years ago, mm-hmm. how to break a neck without even flint, just least energy. Mm-hmm. So the stunt people worked out just like this really hideous way of dispatching people. It's just like, crack, break. <sighs> and that's, and so for in rehearsal, I was alone in my room. I just tried to desensitize my entire central nervous system and emotional range. Because Jack is mono. Everything registers the same. While everyone else around him is screaming, shooting, when our uh, Kara, uh, Kate Greenhouse, who plays the waitress, she's mm-hmm. incredible. You know, she finally figures out what I am. And like we have that big, you know, where she's like, you know, how many of, of, the, of you are there? It's like just one. Where I'm just like, uh, as I'm pulling a bullet out of my head. She gets to scream and freak out. I can't. And so I just had to kind of switch off everything and all the humorous parts, which was my chief concern. Um, you have to throw all the comedic beats away and hope the physicality will get you there. Mm-hmm. And so what looks like a guy going, yeah, no, I was burning a lot of calories in that. And so we would do every scene and then Jason would say, okay, Jack, you, let's do one for you. Like, you got an idea about this that we didn't get to? I go, yeah, I got a thing I want to do. And so we would do one or two takes for me that I, I just want to change the action. We move a thing, and I tell the other actor, I'm going to, I'm, we're going to go to the floor on this one. He's like, okay. And so a lot of times we would do my version, and Jason would go like, okay, hold on to that one. Make a note of that because that's the one. Mm-hmm. And that happened every few days. It's his film. But he would always ask, you, got, you know, can we do one for you? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I always had another idea because it's always good to have at least five more ideas oh, on sure, how to sure, do sure, something. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, part two? Well, I, I, I can't talk too much out of class because I, I really love these guys. Um, not only is part two written, and I've read it and read it and read it, and it's so insane. The miniseries is written, mm-hmm. and I've read that, and mm-hmm. it's and Jason's brilliant. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is, they broke the mold on that guy. It's just a wild imagination. He's going to do a lot of stuff. And so all of that's been done. It's been pitched. And there's, there was, you know, some hope of part two. It ran into difficulties a couple of times. And at this point, I don't know where it, it is. Because okay. as you know, in this genre of film, Money's often tight unless it's a franchise that just pays off like Disneyland. Right. It, the, the level of films I've been in, I've not been that lucky. It's always been like, let's, let's get this made. Uh, okay, that take was good because we don't have... Like, may I give you a brief anecdote on working with Mad Mike Mendez and The Last Heist? A guy I have nothing but, but affection for. He's amazing. We had a very minimal budget Mm -hmm. and thankfully Mike knows how to make a good looking movie beautiful looking movie Mm -hmm. on vapors in your gas tank Mm -hmm. kind Mm -hmm. of money the last shot I was in could have been maybe it was the last shot of the film I I forget I think so they said literally you have 90 seconds or like time's up because we can't afford this after 5 p.m. So and we had, it was like someone coming out of a ceiling or something and like, go. Well, it's like, just start shooting. And, and they're like, it's like this. And they're like, and that's a wrap. Did you get it? And they're like, yes, we got it. I'm like, okay, I've never been on a film set <laughs> like that because there wasn't one person in the film who wouldn't have said, dude, just take like an extra hour. You got it. Like, let's finish this thing. It was some kind of, paperwork thing Mm -hmm. and it was down to go 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 i I, it was it was intense let's talk about that character for a second sure uh another very wow you and horn rim glasses a works (laughs) uh but that that whole character that whole talk about that that character sure i want to get your voice in that character um i got this script and i loved it and i i I, what I wanted to do immediately was get away from any typical way it's going to, like, scary guy who extracts eyeballs. Like, Ugh. like no, no, he should smile a lot. Like, let's just, he should almost be laughing mm-hmm. all the time. So I met up with Mike. I said, okay, 
And I, you know, my, my script, I overdo everything. I, it's like tons of notes. I said, here's the, what I've been doing. He's like, wow, great. He goes, so what's your idea? I said, he smiles. He's just almost at the verge of laughing, giggling. He's just scary happy. Just kind of like, because he's doing, he thinks he's doing the Lord's work mm -hmm. and he really thinks he's helping. Mm -hmm. And he's a total monster. But he's not, whoa, he's, hi, I, can I talk to you? <laughs> Kill. Mm -hmm. And he went, I love that. I said, so let's just, if, you know, it's your movie, boss, but that's how, that's how I want to come in the door on this. And he went, yeah. And I'm sure that was kind of sort of his idea anyway, but we kind of sat down at a restaurant at some point before the show started. And we started, I came in with my ideas and he went, yeah, he said, I was kind of there myself. He's kind of like, the, keeps pushing the glasses up and, you know, a nerd who kills. And that's kind of how we started the guy out. And just very, uh, uh, he's an odd person. And I tried to show the oddness in his physicality whenever I could. When I walk in and the woman is in line to get her safe deposit box, and I'm like, really need to get back there. And the woman was like, okay. And I just, I was like, almost like <laughs> I, I, I said, I want to play it like the, the, the was it the, the ostrich who dips into the water? Mm -hmm. that, that thing. Yeah, I said, I want to be like, whip, whip. He went, yeah. I go, he's nuts. And everything he does is weird. He goes into a room and he can never pass for normal. Because he'll just like, you know, everyone will go like, okay, get away from him hide your kids <laughs> and that's how I played the whole thing and there's that one great scene I'm forget it I'm forgetting the name of the actress and I think is, is she bleeding out I'm going what, what's it what's it like what's it like and that was all improv really and, yeah and, and I'm poking her and laughing and we did that a bunch of different times and I just would just rat he goes okay now just you know more and I'm like <laughs> you know just I just made it as insane as I, I just, we just went with this guy. Mm -hmm. And it was just really enjoyable. We worked really hard on that film. And uh, the, you know, it's kind of fun to talk about now that I'm showered. But there was so much damn blood on my, on my character. There's this one day where I'm just kind of dipped in blood. Mm -hmm. And it was such that if I, if I, I kept falling asleep in my chair between takes because we were running and gunning. I, I kept falling asleep in my chair and my chin would, I'd stick because I was covered in so much blood. Like, I'm like, yeah! <laughs> I was in so much pain. And I would, we shot downtown in Los Angeles, which is just hell getting to and back. I live in Hollywood. And I'd be so tired at the end of the day. They'd say, you want to come in and have us? I'm like, just no, I, just give me some Barbasol shaving cream. I'll just get it. I, I just want to go home and sleep because we're back in like 11 hours or something. And I'd be in traffic. And it, I, I don't know if it's ex exactly illegal, but it's, it's a kind of a no-no to drive with like a horn coming out of your head. Because mm -hmm. in Hollywood, you will see someone at Trader Joe's with a little bit of goo left on them. You're like, just walked off the set. They're like, what? Oh, the eye. <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> And so I went home a few days, kind of, sort of, mm -hmm. looking like I had a hard day at the office. I'm <laughs> like, screw it. I just want to go home. But in downtown LA, no one even looks twice. Man dipped in blood. Must be Tuesday. Even if it was real blood, most people probably wouldn't even care. They wouldn't have at all. <laughs>